Hey, what's going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the nine game NBA main slate on Wednesday. Before I get into the video, if you guys if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. Really appreciate all you guys have come and checked out the YouTube live streams the last couple of days. If you're unable to watch these videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link is down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. And if you're interested in more uh, in-depth premium content, offer that on patreon.com, two different packages. Again, more info down below. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Thrive Fantasy. Guys, Thrive Fantasy is a player prop site. We're actually building out a lineup on player props. So how it works is for NBA, um, you pick 10 of the 20 options. The less probable the prop is to occur, the more points you receive you choose correctly. So for example, Gordon Hayward, 15 and a half real life points. Um, the under or the over is more likely to occur. So you only get 95 points, but, um, the under, if it does hit, you get a little bit more points, even though it's less likely to occur. So again, some game theory involved and you have 20 player props to choose from. You pick 10 of those and build out a lineup. Um, $20 entry, $1,500 to first. They run some pretty decent sized contests. So if you guys want to try it out, make sure to sign up and use my code DKDFS. It is DKDFS, all one word. You will get a hundred percent match up. 100% match up to $100. And as always, I want to thank you guys for continuing to come in and watch these YouTube videos. Just make sure if you do enjoy the free content to hit that like button. Let's try to aim for 100 likes on this video. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right. So before we get into players and the prices, let's look back my up here from tonight. And tonight, like most nights for NBA DFS, I am in a lot, a lot of pain uh, because now the fourth night in uh, about a week, where I have missed by one point or less in GPPs. So again, just all, all pain. And we'll go over some box score errors as well. It's just like, yeah, it's it's ultimate pain. But so this is my lineup. Rubio, Hampton, Nawaba, LeBron, James, Knight, Graham, Jones, and Jokic. Um, did have to make some pivots here. I originally had Nas Reed, and then once I got news that um, Nathan Knight was uh, actually starting and pivoted to get him in. I moved off of, I think I had Temple in here and moved up uh, to somewhere. I moved a couple things around, but um, yeah, I was pretty high on those Pelicans guys. You know, they were really thin, especially with Josh Hart out. So Herb Jones was an absolute smash. Devontae Graham was fine. Um, Jokic, we'll go over that in a sec. Uh, Nathan Knight did, did foul out too. That was a little bit tilting. LeBron, Nawaba, Arch Hampton, and Rubio rounded out my lineup. Again, cash was 350. I was 349.75. All right, so I'll show you this really quick. Um, again, so here's one um, where Jokic had 18 rebounds, sequence, blah, blah, blah. Basically, he had two offensive rebounds. Uh, they said in the game, Cavs had two offensive rebounds, and they only counted it as one. So there's one, you know, kind of error in the box score. Another one was this last play here. Uh, again, the dust of Iguodala. Imagine having Dusty Iguodala take the last shot. But um, you can watch this. He um, So he airballed it. Jokic gets the rebound, and they scored it as an offensive rebound in the box score for the Warriors. Very clearly, you know, Jokic grabbed that rebound. Um, again, they scored it as an offensive rebound for Golden State. So an error in the box score there error here so two missed rebounds there for Jokic um ultimate ultimate pain so I just needed one of those to um to get in the cash someone sent me like a play-by-play -play of this and like freeze framed it and I guess like by like a like a less than a tenth of a second maybe the ball wasn't in Jokic's hand whatever I, I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna freeze frame it but like two errors in the box scores missed by point seven or missed by point two five I'm having a lot of fun uh, so let me just show you guys something real quick over the, this is the last week. This is the last week. Okay. This is not over a stretch of like a month. This is the last week. All right. Let me show you this. So this was tonight again, 349.75, 350, the cash line. Here's a couple more. This one was a swing of $500. So I had a lineup train of like six, seven guys past me and, uh, less than a point, $500 swing there. Here's another one. 328.75, 329 was the cash. And second place, again, uh, 329.25. I needed one, one just rebound or assist from Middleton there, another $500 swing. And then uh, another one, 298.75 to 299.5. So as I said, I'm having a lot of fun, guys. I'm having a lot of fun. No, but seriously, 
Um, you know, it is what it is, whatever. I'm not like, they're not gonna, they're not gonna reverse this. They're not gonna give Jokic the rebound because it was an error. Like if it was an error on DraftKings part, if like the box score had it as Jokic rebound and then DraftKings didn't, then they would be making that change, but th- they can't change it if the box score had it wrong. So, um, whatever it is, what it is, but that's a new tilt. You know, we've had a lot of new tilts this year. You know, we had to tilt a picnic, um, I feel like there was a couple been really random tilts and the error in the box score is a new tilt for me. Um, so yeah, guys, that's all I got for my look back. This was the winning lineup in the Thunderdome, really high scoring night overall. Dinwiddie, Monk, Jimmy Butler, Herbert Jones, Yurt Goat 7, Rubio, LeBron James, and Nathan Knight, the winning lineup there. A lot of condensed ownership. Yurt 7, 100%, Rubio, 100%, LeBron, 100%. Dinwiddie got 50%, uh, Jimmy Butler got 66%, Herbert Jones got 50% ownership. So that is it for the look back. Um, we did it still have a lot of big winners in the Patreon, so that was really good to see. Uh, congrats to all you guys. Uh, congrats if you cashed. If you missed by less than a point because of the Yoko Tree bound, well, I feel your pain. I really do. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, nine-game slate. Let's start off on the New York Knicks side. So at the top, Randall, 10.8K. I'm not sure why his price is going up. Um, I really don't understand. It's kind of like Paul George, where his prices continue to go up, even though he was not paying off salary. So really no interest there in Randall. I'm not sure why Alec Burks is 7.2K, because he's played like 15 minutes the last couple of games. So um, again, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Kemba Walker came back down to earth, only went for 18 fancy points. Um, minutes did come down a little bit. You do have to quickly end up playing. So there is a lot more risk involved with Kemba with quickly back in the rotation. I mean, they're all just kind of secondary plays. Again, quickly at 5K, only played 15 minutes in his first game back. So there's not a lot here I'm look, liking on the Knicks side. Now, the Pistons side, well, different story. They are extremely, extremely shorthanded. So let's see if they do the starting lineup. But assuming all these guys that are um, listed as out uh, do end up not playing, then Sneak Bay, 7.9K, probably plays like low 40s minutes. Um, I think he's an okay option, but the only issue with him is the price point is, is way up. Hamadou Diallo at above 6K, he probably plays 35 to 40 minutes. Again, the issue here, though, is the price point for him. Frank Jackson, a little bit more reasonable of price point, only 5.3K. I'm expecting 35 to 40 minutes from him. I think he looks pretty decent. Also, he has shooting guard eligibility, which is nice. And then the rest of the starting lineup, so my guess is Luka Garza starts at the 5. If he does start, he makes for a great value. The only downside with Garza is he's very prone to fouls. Um, he fouled out in 20 minutes last game, but he's going to be productive when he's on the court. So like Luka Garza, and the last game they started, Derek Walton Jr., who played 31 minutes. Assuming he starts again, I think he's a pretty decent value too. Guys off the bench, I think you can you can consider. Uh, Check Diallo played 19 minutes last game. Um, probably not much else here on the Pistons side. Um you know, again, we'll see if maybe they end up changing the starting lineup and maybe Cassius Stanley starts. So, yeah, mono the starting lineup there. But, again, Pistons are extremely, extremely shorthanded. Charlotte and Indiana. So this is a pretty appealing game. Two teams that don't play a whole ton of defense. Lamella Ball at 9.9K. I do like him here at the top. Only played 25 minutes last game. Did not uh, play in the fourth quarter because of the massive blowout. But he was on pace for a pretty solid game. And now he gets the Pacers, so um, I think Lamella Ball looks really good. I think box score watchers uh, might avoid him, but um, I think he has a ton of upside in this spot. With Bridges out, like Hayward, Oubre are fine options. Rogier at 6'4", um, he probably has the most upside. He still has a low floor, but at this price point, I think it's a fair uh, price for him. Um, so, yeah, I do kind of like Rogier there. Cody Martin at 5'3", feels priced about right. Uh, Plumlee had a massive game last game, but like no ownership. Played 29 minutes. Again, with no P.J. Washington uh, against a big Pacers front court, you're probably going to see you know mid to high 20s minutes from Plumlee, which I think makes him a fair value play. And then McDaniels, I expect him to play, you know, 25 to 30 minutes too. He's a guy that can contribute in a lot of different ways. So um, the the Hornets team do look pretty good. Uh, Moving on to the Pacers. So Sabonis at 10-7. You guys know I'm a massive Sabonis fan. And I like this matchup a lot. I love targeting bigs against the Charlotte Hornets. The only issue I have is the price point. He's definitely a little bit overpriced. Keep an eye on Malcolm Brogdon news. He's currently questionable. If he can't go, it would make Levert a viable contrarian spend up because Levert's going to handle the ball a lot more when Brogdon's out. 11 and 9 assists in the two games that Brogdon missed and 50 plus fantasy points in both of those. So, like, Levert would be someone I would have some interest in if Brogdon can't go. If Brogdon's in, probably would stay away from the guards. Turner's too pricey with Sabonis healthy, and there's not really anything else I'm looking to on the Pacer side. All right, Clippers and Celtics. So, 
Okay, no Paul George, no Kawhi, no Reggie Jackson, no Hardenstein, no Nick Batum. Um, so I just got to tilt that last game from Ty Lu. Like, is is he serious? Is Ty Lu serious? He said um, Marcus Morris is going to be on a minutes limit. Sure, he only played twenty seven minutes, guys, but he didn't play in the fourth quarter. In the first half, because the blowout. In the first half, he played nineteen minutes. He was on pace for thirty eight minutes on a minutes limit. That's that's probably the thing that tilts me the most is when coaches just straight up lie. And you had it with the Raptors tonight too. Oh, Siakam, Gary Trent Jr., and um, Malachi Flynn will be on a limit. They played like 45 minutes. Like what do you ugh, – that ugh, it gets me so upset. But um, yeah, no, Marcus Morris, again, he was on pace for almost 40 minutes. So there's there's no limit on Marcus Morris here. Um, he's going to be one of their go-to guys in offense. I think he looks really good at the price – Blood, so I do like a good amount too. He'll do a lot of the ball handling. Seven, ten, and six assists the last three games. So those two look really good. Terrence Mann can contribute in a lot of different ways. I think he's a fair option in the mid-range. Luke Kennard does have some risk because he's score independent, but should play over 30 minutes of the game says close. Zubach has been playing well, but again, what is the opportunity cost of going to him? I think we have mid-20s minutes. Um, and then I'll mention Sergi Bach as a contrarian value play. Did only play 14 minutes last game, but he's been playing the backup five. And he'll be productive when he's on the court. Um, but yeah, guy like... Like, be careful with a guy like Coffee in Boston. Again, these guys' minutes have been a little bit inflated last couple games. This game where we played 33 minutes, Kennard had like five fouls in 10 minutes. And this game, um, again, the starters did not touch the court in the fourth quarter. So just... Be careful with a guy like Boston because uh, I'm not sure he's going to continue to play close to 30 minutes a game. All right, on the Boston side. So still no Jalen, uh, Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown at 10K, well, he had one of his worst. He shot 8 of 24, uh, but the usage was clearly, clearly there. So I'm perfectly fine going to Brown even at this price point because he's going to dominate the usage, play big, big minutes. Horford at 7-1, Robert Williams at 6-6, more secondary plays for me. Still no Schroeder. we got to keep on Marcus Smart news. If Marcus Smart can't go, I think Pritchard's a decent option in the mid-range, played 45 minutes. Now, he probably wouldn't play that much because we do have Josh Richardson coming back, um, and he will definitely take some minutes away from Pritchard. But um, if Smart can't go and Pritchard starts, I'm still okay paying that price point for him because Pritchard's been playing really well over the last couple of weeks. He'll be productive when he's on the court. And sure, we probably don't see 45 minutes, but... Maybe we get, you know, 30 to 35 minutes from a starting point guard. So would have some interest there in Pritchard if he starts as smart as out. Atlanta and Chicago. So, well, they, they just played this game a couple days ago, and it was just a massive shootout. There's no defense played. Trey Young, 11, I think he's a decent contrarian option. Again, still has a relatively low floor, but this Hawks team is depleted, and Trey Young's going to have to do everything. And he played 40 minutes in his first game back, so there are clearly no limitations on Trey. Again, I think he's a good contrarian sped up. Capella at 8.2K did only play 26 minutes, wasn't in foul trouble. So um, I'm actually not sure why he only played 26 minutes against a big front court there with like every other big out for the Hawks. So if anyone knows, let me know why he only played 26. But I would assume Capella, if he stays out of foul trouble, probably plays 35 minutes in this game. So again, a little bit interested in him as a contrarian option. Cam Reddish went absolutely off last game, uh, won for 44 fancy points. Now, again, he's not going to be their top option offense. Trey Young's definitely going to be that guy, but Reddish might be the number two here with Bogdanovich out too. So if you want to go to Reddish in the mid range, I don't think he's the worst play. I just don't think we can expect 30 plus real life points again from him. And then again, with Bogdanovich out, like who else is going to start? So it's going to be Reddish, Trey Young, Capella. My guess is Skylar Mays probably starts too. And then like, does Sean D. Brown start? I don't know. Like, these are value options that we're probably going to have to consider because, like, who else is going to play minutes for this team? Lance Stevenson's probably going to have to play some minutes too. So, like, yeah, keep an eye on that starting lineup. But um, whoever the other two starters, I think you you got to have interest in them because of how shorthanded they are. On the Chicago Bulls side, so basically everyone that touched the court last game just absolutely smashed. Like, Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, all crush. Now, I think that was a little bit of an outlier. I know Atlanta is depleted and they haven't been great in the defensive end, but I don't know if we can expect, you know, what we got last game from these Bulls guys. Like Vucevic won for 65. DeRozan, they went for almost 60. Yeah, 57. And Levine went for like 51. So 52. So I have interest in these, in these Chicago guys. I think they're good GBP plays. I just don't know if we can expect an exact repeat of last game where they all just absolutely smash. And I think that was a little bit of an outlier game. Kobe White, if you played him last night, you got a little bit unlucky. He started, 
played 25 minutes, but got in massive foul trouble right away. Um, assuming he starts again, I think he's a decent contrarian value play because um, I don't think a lot of people go to him. Now, he's definitely been disappointing this year, but uh, Kobe White's still a guy that does have upside. So assuming he starts again, I think he's a decent contrarian value play. Probably won't get to anyone else, though. Lakers and Grizzlies. So Anthony Davis... Uh, again, still out for a while. LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, these are two guys that are going to dominate the uh, usage. LeBron's been phenomenal, you know, the past couple weeks. 61, 68, 72 fans points the last three games alone. So I have no issue paying that price point for LeBron. Westbrook finally had a pretty solid game too. I do prefer LeBron to Westbrook, even with the, uh, you know, $1,000 plus uh, price increase. But um, yeah, so both the two Lakers stars are definitely in play. THT 5-7 uh, was in massive foul trouble last game. So you saw some extra run for guys like Mello and Malik Monk, and they both smashed. Mello back-to-back 40 fancy point games. I think he's an okay option in the mid-range. And Malik Monk at 4K, we probably won't get 40 minutes, but if we get like 30 plus minutes from him at this price point, I think he makes for a pretty good value play. Because uh, again, the Lakers are also pretty depleted. They started LeBron at the 5-2. Um, and then they gave pretty big minutes to guys like Avery Bradley and Stanley Johnson, who I think are decent contrarian value plays. Neither are going to be productive, but if they're going to run this tight of a rotation again, then sure, I think you can you can consider those guys at their respective price points. All right, on the Memphis side. So you guys know I'm a big, big fan of Ja, and now he gets the Lakers. Uh, last game played 34 minutes, looking like there's basically no, no limitations now on Ja. His price went down, the matchup's fantastic, and the minutes are trending up on him. So... I like Jock quite a bit here. Again, I think this is a smash spot, and he's only 8.8K. Triple J, if you watch my videos, you know what I'm going to say about him. Desmond Bain at 6'2". Well, he's been playing really well uh, last couple weeks. 40-plus uh, fancy points now in three of the last four games. So if you want to go to Desmond Bain, I think that's totally fine. No Dylan Brooks. Um, he's been playing, again, really well. Now, my issue with Steven Adams is he's... Um, going up against the Lakers, and they started LeBron at the five last game. So, like, Memphis has shown they can go small and not close with Adams. So, my worry here is if the Lakers continue to start small, then there's a chance Adams' minutes are limited. Now, you know, Adams is a relatively productive player, a good rebounder, a good shot blocker. Um, I'm just a little bit worried about his minutes in this game. Now, if they start like DeAndre Jordan or Dwight Howard, then I would have more confidence in a guy like Steven Adams. And then John Conchar is also out. Uh, he had been starting 28 and 34 minutes last couple games. So those minutes have to go somewhere. I would assume slow-mo Kyle Anderson picks up the start. If he does, I do like him for value. Another guy that can contribute in a lot of different ways. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really where I'm at right now for Memphis. So let's move on to Miami and San Antonio. Another extremely shorthanded team here in Miami. Jimmy Butler at 9-3. Absolutely went off last game. Um, and now he gets the Spurs that don't play a ton of defense. And his price did not move. So he looks great at his price. Tyler Hero, 6-9, came off the bench, played 35 minutes. Going to be very, very high usage when he's out there. I think he looks good, too. A little bit riskier than Jimmy. But, again, both the Heat stars look great. Gabe Vincent, 5-2, should play big minutes. They basically ran an eight-man rotation last game. Um, so I think he's a safe play in the mid-range. Duncan Robinson, a little bit riskier. Um, he's a little more boomer bust, but he still can go for like mid-30s fancy points if he's hitting his shots like he did tonight. And then the GOAT, Omer GOAT7. Um, it's it's great he's finally getting minutes, guys, and he's producing. And he is he was phenomenal in the summer league, Actually, um, absolutely dominant. And now he's uh, getting his chance to, to get some run, and he's showing what he can do on the offensive end. A great rebounder. Great around the rim. Um, I think he's a really good value once again at 4 6. Um, there's still a couple other guys we can consider. Caleb Martin at 3.9K should start and play around 30 minutes. I think he makes for a good value. Kind of had an off game last game, but um, 30 and 40 plus fans points the previous two. I think he looks pretty good. Opala's probably pushing it for me um, just because the minutes are not high in him and he's not a good point per minute guy at all. Garrett saw some run, um, but uh, again, probably not going to go there. And yeah, that is it for Miami. So a team that looks pretty good shorthanded. Moving on to the Spurs side. So um, no to John Murray. I think Derek White looks really good here. I really liked him last slate as a contrarian play against the Jazz. I knew the ownership would be low. And he went off uh, 35 minutes, 43 fancy points. Um, I don't think he gets a ton of ownership here too because of the matchup. But if he's going to play mid-30s Mets, he is going to dominate the usage here for the Spurs. So I think Derek White looks really, really good. Pirtle at 6'2", I think is a fair contrarian play. Um, you're at 7, he's good in the offensive end, not so much in the defensive end. 
other than that, you know, guys like Kelvin, Lonnie, Vassell, McDermott are all viable for tournaments. You know, um, all these guys do have upside, but there's no one that I really trust uh, enough to feel confident to uh, go there. OKC and Phoenix. So on the Oklahoma City side, we have Shea Gillis Alexander, 9.2K. Um, played 35 minutes tonight. Again, it's kind of nice. DraftKings is actually updating. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, DraftKings actually is updating um, these box scores pretty quick. So that's that's a positive for DraftKings. Um, but yeah, this team is super, super shorthanded. So if they're going to stay in this game, it's going to be because of Shea. So I think he's a decent contrarian spend up. Kenneth Williams, 4K, did not start, but did play 28 minutes. I think he's a decent value, a guy that can do it uh, in a lot of different ways. And then the center spot here for the uh, Thunder. So you had Isaiah Roby start. Um, didn't play a ton, but did play 22 minutes. I think he's a decent value option. Um, they gave Mike Muscala some backup run, but not a ton. Where's Muscala? Um, the Thunder still, even though they're shorthanded, they still found a way to run like 12 guys out there for some reason. It's like, what are you doing? And whatever whatever uh, Oliver Saar is, saw minutes too. Like, again... They're missing a ton of guys, and they still found. They're a gold state. They still found a way to play basically everyone on the roster. So gonna be hard. Gonna be hard to feel confident about any of those other value options on the Phoenix side. Now we have no DeAndre Ayton, um, Booker, Paul. I think if you think this game stays competitive, make for good tournament plays. But without Ayton, I think Javel McGee looks really solid here. Now he let basically the entire DFS community down last slate. He has caused me. Um, an immense amount of pain over this last month. Again, I think I told you guys last video, I'm pretty sure, but um, I had played him when DeAndre Aiden was out, uh, you know, the la- or like for like four or five straight slates at very low ownership. Every single time he got in massive top foul trouble. And when I finally faded him, he went for 50 fancy points. Um, and when basically everyone uh, in the industry played him last night, he just got in severe foul trouble. Uh, but if he can stay out of foul trouble, we know the type of upside he, he brings, right? Like, you, just, you can go back a week or two. 16 minutes, 33 fancy points. 16 minutes, 32 fancy points. 16 minutes, like, he can smash. And if he's going to, if he stays out of foul trouble, I think he gets mid to high 20s minutes. So um, I think the uh, last game will definitely lower the ownership in him, but I'm still fine going right back to Wall McGee. Now, if you think this game blows out or McGee gets in some foul trouble, you can definitely look to a guy like Jalen Smith, who a uh, summer league goat for Phoenix. They just ran basically the entire time. But he played the backup five. He played 29 minutes. Another guy that, you know, is pretty productive when he's on the court. He's a decent shot blocker, um, good rebounder, and he does have power forward eligibility, which is kind of nice. And this is a game you would think, you know, there's a chance this game blows out. So, like, McGee's not going to play in the blowout, right? It's going to be Jalen Smith. So, I think he's an interesting contrarian value play. Moving on to Utah and Portland. So, again, Mitchell's going to be out for a few weeks. Rudy Gobert at almost 10K. Um, feels a little bit pricey for me. Conley at 6'6". Does get a usage bump. But, um, you know, the price is... I don't love it. Clarkson, um, again, should get more minutes and more usage. He had a really good game last game. I will just caution you. I think Clarkson's a solid option. But we've seen multiple times here when Donovan Mitchell's out where Clarkson has uh really struggled or at least struggled in the first half I, what was it, like a month ago i think clarkson had like a couple fancy points in the first half and then just absolutely went off in the second half so like the the ceiling goes way way up in clarkson but he still has a relatively low floor if he's not hitting his shots he did stuff the stat sheet last game but again there's there are times where he can be a uh, scoring dependent but again he does look way better with Mitchell off the court. But Donovan's role doesn't change a ton. Joe Ingles should start and play around 30 minutes. I think he's a pretty good value at only 4K. And then, you know, Royce O'Neal played 34 minutes. He did not have a good game last game, but he's a guy that can do it in a lot of different ways. And Rudy Gay probably gets about 20 minutes too. I think those two are decent contrarian value plays. If you think the game blows out, you can look to a guy like Whiteside, who, um, you know, probably plays in a competitive game, 12 to 14 minutes and a blowout uh, might be pushing for you know, close to 20 minutes. So I always mention him as a GPP option. Moving on to Portland. So tougher spot here. Dame at 10-6. No one probably is going to be on him. I think he's an okay contrarian option, but does feel a little bit pricey. Uh, Norman Powell at 7K. I'll pass there. Where I'm mainly interested in two are these wings uh, in Nance and Little. So like 
Uh, the Portland Trailblazers, they have like no other big. So Larry Nance, if he can stay out of foul trouble, probably pushes for 40 minutes. He played 32 minutes in a massive blowout last game. So um, again, Nance does get a pretty significant boost playing the five. I know it's not a good spot against Gobert, but still some interest in him. Nasir Little went absolutely off last game. 34 minutes, 48 fans points. Now that was kind of an outlier. Um, plus you have a much tougher matchup against Utah, but I still think he's a pretty good play. So Nance and Little, the two guys I'm probably looking to the most. Um, probably won't get to anyone else. Like, there's just made-up players in this team. Like, Cameron McGriff. I mean, I mean, come on, right? Like, I've said that a lot this last week or two with the way COVID's been. Like, again, Cameron McGriff, come on. Like, they're not even they're not even trying to be sneaky when they make up players. Like, yeah. And, and, and Cumberland? Like, no, no. Again, fake. Fake, fake, fake. All right, Dallas and Sacramento. So, no Luka Doncic. Uh, Porzingis uh, at 9.4K. Price might scare some people off, but um, I think he's a good GPP play because he's shown the type of upside he has. And that game blew out last game, too, against Portland, too. So, Sacramento not scared of them defensively. He should be able to dominate the glass. I think Porzingis is a good GPP play. Um, Brunson at 7.9. Uh, probably a little bit easier to get to, maybe more of a cash game play. Does have shooting guard eligibility, which is really nice. Um, it's going to be these two that are really going to lead the offense. And I expect mid to high th- uh, or mid 30s minutes or so for both these two. So I think both the Dallas Stars look good. Other than that, Dorian Finney Smith at 5'8 feels priced about right. I will mention Dwight Powell at 3.8K. Kind of like him as a sneaky value play. The minutes have ticked up on him a bit 20, 21, 21, 27, and 24 minutes over the last five games. So, like, I think he's an okay value option. Again, matchup is good too. So that's our map for Dallas. And finally, Sacramento. So um, yeah, it's hard for me to get to or feel great about anyone with De'Aaron Fox back. Now, Halburn still had a good game, um, even with De'Aaron Fox in the lineup, but um, I don't necessarily trust it. Again, Fox is 7-9, did play 35 minutes, but he's been pretty disappointing this year. Holmes at 5-5, still is not playing huge minutes, only played 25 the last game. Uh, Marvin Bagley did start. He played 28 minutes. If he starts again, I think he's playable. Probably it, though, for me on the Sacramento side. So, yeah, guys, that is going to do it for the YouTube video. If you have been enjoying the content, again, just make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Would really, really appreciate it. Thanks again, guys. Have a great night, and I will see you all uh, tomorrow. Again, I will be doing YouTube live stream tomorrow. I'll see you all in the live stream then.